All right, good afternoon, YouTube. It is another gorgeous day here in Middle Tennessee. Anyway, today we are uh, putting together a cement mixer. I bought this three and a half cubic foot cement mixer from Harbor Freight. It's a central machinery one. Um, it's the biggest one they had, at least in store. I wanted to get it right away. Um, it's electric powered one. Not really what I wanted, but uh, I think it'll work. I've got a lot of uh, a lot of projects coming up where I'm going to need to mix cement and mortar, and um, I'm thinking that this will be a handy thing to have instead of doing it with the, uh, the big drill and the bucket and stuff like that. So this way I can do uh, a couple bags at a time or whatever it'll hold. Three and a half cubic feet probably holds what three bags, something like that. But uh, Anyway, let's see if we can get it together. I looked at it in the store. Uh, they had one assembled in the store and everything, and it looks looks fairly decent uh, for a Harbor Freight tool. <laughs> but the box it comes in here is pretty small. So <laughs> looks like there is going to be some assembly required. So let's tear into it, see how bad it is. Okay, right away you can see that this thing has been beat up. Thin cardboard box coming all the way from China, you can just imagine. But it's already popped the paint off and that. And doesn't look like it broke the welds or anything, but it's stressed it enough to pop the paint. Could have just been a bad paint job too, um, and it's just flaking. But initial impression is we probably already have some damage in here. <laughs> But let's get the rest of the stuff out of here and see if we can figure out how to put it together. So we'll take a look at the uh, manufacturer's suggestion on how to assemble this thing. And, and we'll see if we agree with it. <laughs> Alright, well here we go. We have a couple of the pieces assembled on this. The base basically already. And uh, first impressions are this is a piece of junk. But... <laughs> Let me rephrase that. First impressions are not too hot right now. Um, the directions are kind of poor, and this is really thin-walled stuff. But if it mixes the car, you know, if the motor's strong enough and it turns and it mixes, that's really all I care about. It's not a commercial unit. I'm just going to be doing stuff here, and I'm, you know, probably going to run a few hundred bags through it and be done with it. So. If it lasts that long, it, it will have done the job and is good enough. So we'll see how it goes. But right now, um, my first impressions are not real strong on this. I thought when I started unboxing everything, they've got all the bags numbered and all that. I thought, oh, this is going to be great. I love when they do that. They tell you, right, you know, each thing is split up into where it needs to go. But you get in the directions and... Eh, it doesn't tell you what bag to use. <laughs> just so I'm just kind of going in order, number order. So I don't know. It's interesting. We'll figure it out. But all right, so we got the uh, bowl on there now, and then we you want to put this thing on there. This is uh, your uh, tilt control, basically, for your handle. When you when you put your handle on here, it'll whoops, put that on backwards. When you put your handle on here, it locks into those little detents there, so you can adjust your position as you rotate the drum. Now, another thing I found with the instructions here, uh, lack thereof, you do want to go basically in basically you are going to want to go in number order on those packages of the hardware. They don't really specify in the directions which one, which bag you're using for which uh, thing. But when you get to the handle, you'll see that there's a there's a bag. Actually, the spring is in a separate bag. It must be like an afterthought or whatever. It's in bag number 13. But bag 5 has all the hardware for your handle. And in that bag, there is a washer. If I can get to it here. 
um, it's more like a plug than a washer solid that actually goes inside of this first drop that plug in there then you drop your spring in and when you tighten this bolt it pushes on that spring when you tighten this bolt it'll push on that spring and add spring tension to your handle to hold that into the detents um, again directions are not very clear on that so I thought I would point that out if anybody happens to be watching this trying to put theirs together that's how it goes and then you just bolt your handle to the shaft here and they have a uh, double nut on this you don't want to tighten this too tight because then your handle won't pivot if you're uh, if you crank this nut down so they actually have a jam nut that they included with it too so you just want to snug that up until you get it you know get this compressed into about the size of this shaft and still have free movement and then you can put your jam nut on so and you can see how that spring pushes that into the detents and then when you go further I got my tools in there so I won't go too far but you can it'll hold it into the different positions all right so I kind of lied that they uh, don't have the explanation of what hardware bag goes where there's a whole separate sheet I didn't see this loose piece of paper in the box or actually it was stuffed in the back of this book but um, each bag number shows you what part it goes to on the uh, assembly here so so I'll give them credit they do have that they just didn't have it in the actual directions on when you're assembling it so so just keep an eye out for this separate sheet if you have one of these on how and where each little hardware kit goes um, so I do have it almost together uh, I was just putting the top drum together with the bottom drum and feeding this rubber gasket in there they tell you to get some gasket adhesive and glue this onto the top piece but I found it just as easy just to slide it in there as I'm bolting don't tighten anything down just slide it in line up the holes and run the bolt through as you go so I'm doing that and then I just got to figure out how to get these uh, mixing paddles installed here because again they don't show a picture of that unless I'm missing that as well but I'll figure that out and I'll show you which direction those go in a second I'm just gonna finish bolting these up and then I'm gonna adjust the motor tension I have the motor just sitting here and uh, I just want to adjust the belt tension line that motor up good it has a lot of slop both in and out on the motor these big um, slats here and then it also has a big up and down slat to adjust your belt tension so we're almost done assembling here um, whoops board is stuck so you have to take um, this little oh, you have to take this little box apart here and run your wires in here and hook them up and it's simply white to white black to black and green gets screwed to that ground bolt on there uh, down on the bottom here right there with the other ground so you just plug them in they're just these uh, connectors pretty simple there is um, also one of these click in bushings in the parts thing too so after you get those in you got to put that on so there you go now we just put this cover on all right I have it finished assembled I uh, just wanted to point out that I believe this is the way that the uh, paddles go in here for mixing there was not clear instructions on that but I looked at the picture and it looked like this part of the paddle uh, was toward the outside and then there's also a uh, uh, parts blow up where it showed that the skinny end was bolted here so 
I think that is correct. And they also have arrows on the drum to line up where the where they're supposed to go. So I think that's correct. But overall, I think the directions uh, could use a little help. It's nice that there was individual hardware packages that were numbered. Once I found that little schematic of what each number was supposed to be for, that helped also. I just kind of went through uh, in number order um, and then went through with the directions on what they told to bolt on next. So it was, it was pretty clear that way too. Uh, overall, I think the thing is uh, typical Harbor Freight construction. Um, you know, it's thin metal. This, this stamping where this bolts together was pretty difficult to get it together because the stamping is a little off on it. But, I mean, little stuff like that. It's thin wall, uh, metal, you know, kind of ch chintzy wheels, you know, Harbor Freight. But I think for what I need it for, I think it's going to work just fine. We'll give it some tests. We'll show you it in use. Um, probably the first thing I'm going to do with it is up by the... Uh, uh, fence gates, I'm going to use this to pre-mix the concrete for the gate posts. I don't want to just dump concrete in the hole for that. I want that mixed properly so that we have strong gate posts and they won't lean. And then also I'm going to put a little pad uh, next to each gate post, uh, like a footing, that I'm going to eventually build uh, little stone pillars on either side. To, it'll won't hold the gate but it'll look like it's holding the gate and uh, hide that gate post so it looks like the gate is hung off of a stone pillar i think it'll look pretty good but that's going to be a later on project but i at least want to get the footer done while i'm setting the posts that way um, i'm not moving on the posts or anything like that and i want to put some rebar down in the hole post holes onto that pad to keep that pad from tilting or anything like that too but I'll show you guys all that stuff while I'm doing it but I thought this would be a good um, thing to have for that project and also when we get into doing the pool um, I'll show you what I have in mind for that that's going to be too hard to explain but I have an idea uh, a new idea of how to build the pool so if you haven't subscribed yet you're going to want to subscribe and follow along on that pool project i think it's going to be if it turns out it's going to be pretty cool so um anyway i guess last thing to do here turn this thing on see if it works <laughs> so i it's all plugged in uh it's just a simple switch here and there we go That's pretty strong. You can... One way it should mix, the other way it should dump, theoretically. That way it looks like it's pulling it in. That's a little safety for when you're working on it, it doesn't automatically turn on. I like that. I was wondering what that yellow piece was. Looks like it's a little safety you can pop out so the thing will not turn on um, unintentionally. But Well that's pretty much going to wrap it up for today. Thank you guys for watching. This is the Harbor Freight 3.5 yeah, cubic foot cement mixer uh, it's made by central machinery and uh, it was what was this thing 220 I think 220 bucks so I figure for that it'll do $220 worth of work for me before it blows up hopefully <laughs> but <laughs> follow along with these videos I'll let you know how it holds up um, again just for the the projects I have I, I wouldn't you know use it to pour the pad for the shop over there or anything but for small project post holes and small footers and mixing up mortar and that for the pool project that I want to do, I think it's going to work out swimmingly. Once again, if you like these kind of videos, it uh, helps me out a bunch. If you'll hit that like button, click subscribe and ring that bell, you'll get notified of all the videos we put out and uh, the other shenanigans we get into. 
<laughs> Thanks again for watching. Really appreciate you guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.